Hello guys, this is Damaduck82, and uh, today we are going to be continuing with part 5 of my series on, um, on doing aircraft. And uh, as promised, today we're going to be learning how to do uh, custom jet engines. So I've already got uh, From the Depths open here with uh, our single wooden block. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we're going to do is uh, I like to usually start with uh, the thrusters first and kind of build the aircraft around it. So we're going to go ahead and start with that. Now with a custom jet, of course, you, you need the custom uh, jet controller. So let's go ahead and place that guy first. We don't need this block here anymore. And funny thing about the uh, jets in From the Depths, or the custom jet engines, uh, you don't really need all this other crap. Um, I mean, yeah, the compressor and intake will help you get a bit more efficiency out of your engine, but they're not exactly 100% necessary. So next what we're going to do is put that mirror line up, and we're going to put like a few of these fuel injectors and extra combustors and we're gonna put some extra combustors up here too I don't think I want to put any on the bottom because that's kinda gonna later on affect what I have planned for this but uh, genuinely adding things like this to the outside will help the efficiency of your engine except for the fuel injectors they're gonna make your engine eat up a lot more fuel a lot more faster um, but like I said, you can add the compressors and the intakes and all that. It's not a big deal. The uh, These add-ons here that you put on for the intakes and the compressor, it just it helps to increase the efficiency of the jet. But I'm not too worried about fuel efficiency with this, so let's just continue for now. Uh, I just realized I forgot to add a piece to the back here. We need... Well, you don't... I'm just uh, going to add the exhaust here, and now we're going to try building our jet around this. So, what I usually like to build them out of is uh, alloy. It's a great material, and uh, it also lowers the uh, radar cross temperature of the craft, so it can be very, very handy. Um, I think we're going to hmm, we're going to go with some beam slopes here, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the wedge piece, and we're just going to go up like this, and that's going to be our tail for the plane. Now, an important thing to remember is um, try to use the sharpest angles when you can generally with these because usually the sharper the angle, um, the less drag you will get from it. So that's why I, I'm doing it this way. Now we can make a tailplane area out of this so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the fill key and just let that fill and trying to think of how I'd like to do this hope you guys can't hear my cat carrying on back there uh, I think I wanna try something like this Again, you don't have to do it this way. This is just so I can make an interesting shape here. And I think we kind of want it to do something like this. Now, also keep in mind that since this is a custom jet aircraft, um, it is going to eat fuel a hell of a lot more than probably 
even like an injectored engine would probably do so that's something to be aware of but we will probably be putting a very small fuel engine in this just to run ammo processors and I'm just trying to make something very very simple here and we're going to just kind of go back and forth with this right here now let's see here up here I think I want let's do this I'm feeling a little adventurous and we'll grab one of those do like that and I think I want to put that piece there instead we will replace that with a three meter beam uh, that doesn't quite line up how I want it so let's just do that and that and we'll do that Now the reason why I am doing it this way is so inside the body of the aircraft we will have a lot of room to put all kinds of things that we'll need to make it function like AI, ammo, fuel. So that's why I'm kind of doing things this way. Uh, I usually go with uh, I believe is what called a lifting body. Um, where like most of the lift for the aircraft is generated from the body and not necessarily the wings. Now I'm thinking right about here we can put that and in this area here we're going to put our ailerons. Actually no let's let's wait till we get, get a little more weight to this thing because you kind of want to know where the center of mass is going to be before you start adding things like that so we'll hold off on it for the moment so what I'm kind of trying to do here is um, I know that uh, in current they're going to buff the armor for or the uh, hit points or whatnot for the uh, custom jet engine but I'm, I'm playing in 2.4.9 where they get shot out relatively easily so I, I kind of like to be uh, prepared for that. Let's see here. Yeah, I think I can go with something like that. And there we go. Now, in I know sometime in the near future they plan on making it to where the uh, custom jet engines will need some kind of uh, intake for air. So this design might not work very well very soon. <laughs> so just something to be aware of. Um, I will put this up on the workshop like I've been doing with a lot of other related designs. So. Just keep an eye out for it and we're going to extend that forward a little bit in this so I think right about here I want to do this and this needs to come out just one more there we go All right, so we probably need. Hmm. We're going to need fuel, of course. So we're just going to go ahead and go into res resources here. And I'm going to plop down some big old beams here for fuel storage. 
and I think that'll be a pretty good amount to get us going here. Um, I think I want to put a just a quick and dirty fuel engine in here. Nothing that's going to be too crazy. And I'm just trying to think of how I can make this small and provide a pretty significant amount of power for this. Um, I think we'll have it kind of come out the top here. And I think I want to go ahead and grab fuel engines, then we're going to put carburetors. And we're going to put some superchargers on the carburetors because I don't expect these to be running at full RPMs all the time. Now, I could go with injectors, but they would need a lot more exhaust than this. And I don't think we're going to probably need more than 400 power, to be honest with you. So I think this is going to be a more efficient route to go with it. Okay. So let's continue on with bringing this part forward. Actually, I'm thinking I want to move these fuel tanks up just like one block and then I'm going to go into air and I'm going to add a few more tailplanes out here. The uh, reason being is with tailplanes I generally find more is better. They'll give the plane more control over uh, yaw and pitch. Alright, so let's bring this a little bit forward here. And let's see here, how do we want to do the ammo? Ammo storage, ammo parts box. Um, yeah, you know, we could do something like this. And I kind of want to, yeah, that's fine. I want to give these ammo boxes just a little bit extra armor. I usually do something like this. Because hope that uh, one meter of metal there should help it from like, completely gutting the plane should those ammo boxes be taken out. And I think I want to bring this back in. We're going to grab some corner piece here and then we're going to grab this piece here. And we're going to put that there. And I kind of want to repeat this on the bottom. Now the tail pieces you don't, that I put back there, you don't necessarily always have to put them in the back. Um, if you put them on the front of the aircraft, they can work as well, but you have to make sure that the settings are reversed for them. So that's just something to keep in mind, but generally it's just easier to put them in the back. And the, 
it's not really too much of a fuss of where you put them. Alright, so I'm thinking about right here in this cavity. Um, we're going to put some metal. And I think from here we're going to stick our AI. Now depending on what kind of role you want this aircraft to serve, you might want to give it a little more EMP protection than what I'm doing here because if this thing takes a huge jolt of EMP, it's going to fry the AI here, so don't take this as gospel. Okay, so we're kind of getting a better idea of where our center of mass is, which is good. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hop back here into the air tab. We're going to grab some of these ailerons and we're going to, of course, I'm putting in the wrong direction, but there we go. Usually like two or three will be more than enough. So, you know, we can just cover the rest of this crap up. And with the ailerons, I, I like to put them just slightly behind the center of mass. That's why I went with this position here, because here is our center of mass, and that's where our ailerons are at. So now our plane has control surfaces. Uh, next here, I think... Kind of just want to continue with what we got up top here. I'm thinking though, uh, a lot of aircraft in front of the depths, most of the uh, counter fire they take is from below, so usually it's kind of better to arm up, armor up the uh, bottom of the craft. So that's why I'm putting some metal down there. Okay, so I think we're going to need us some detection here. I'm not entirely sure why I want to put it just yet. I think we'll come back to that. But generally when I build aircraft like this. I don't really have a idea what I want to build. I just kind of go with it. Um, if I'm to be completely honest with you guys. Now, when you're doing these kind of jet builds like this, it doesn't hurt to uh, have like more than one kind of propulsion system because sometimes these uh, custom jet engines can be extremely vulnerable. So, like maybe backing this up, like with maybe a, a regular uh, jet thruster, like over here and over here, or maybe even ion thrusters, is possibly a good option. 
that's completely up to you guys. Uh, but uh, that's something I I recommend trying to do because the engine could get shot out and then your plane's just going to crash <laughs> because there's no thrust. So sometimes having backup systems is a good idea. Redundancy is always a good thing in From the Depths. So I think in here we're going to go resources, then we're going to put in like some ammo processors here. And I want to fill in this area here. Like so. And then we're going to put a nice sharp point on the front of this. I think I'm going to switch this block out for something more like that. And then put one of these here. Uh, actually, now that I'm looking at it, it might be better just to bring this all one block out a little further. So let's go ahead and delete this for the moment. And we'll just grab our one meter slopes and do like that. All right, so let's try this again. I was just thinking this top part here might actually be a pretty good area to put some balloons in. So let's do that. So let's go back under the air tab. We are going to grab the hot air balloon deployer and put in like maybe three of them. It really varies from aircraft to aircraft how many of these you need. Depending on the weight of the aircraft. So just something to keep in mind. And I think I'm going to do this here with the bottom. And we're just going to put a really sharp nose on the front of this aircraft. The reason being is so we can try to reduce that drag any which way we can. Actually, I'm thinking this spot right here might not be a bad place to put some detection. I'll come back to it. Yeah, anyway. Um, we're going to go with the 2 meter wedges here. I'm just kind of trying to get an idea of how I want to do to the front of this. I'm thinking... Something like that. Doing the nose of some of these can be kind of a pain in the neck. I think I want to do something a bit like this. Let 
I don't know if I like that part. Maybe if I did... yeah, that's better. I'm trying to kind of give it the... get get it to look like over here like there's a cockpit to it. And we'll just slap a chair in there for Rambot to sit in. I'm wondering if I put one of these down here. Maybe. Yeah, we'll do something like this. Now we still need some form of detection on here. I think this might be an okay spot. Okay, so we're going to grab laser rangefinder. Get rid of that mirror line for a moment. And we're going to put a camera 90 over here. And then I'm going to go back here into the AI tab. And we're going to grab us some wireless receivers. Put the mirror line back on. Here we go. And let's go back here under blocks and we're going to grab some apliques. I think the, yeah, the four is going to be a bit on the big side. Let's go ahead and grab this and this. And down here we're going to do that same old trick that Heitzmeister taught me. We're going to put a glass wedge in front of our sensors. That's probably good. We're going to go back here. There we go. That's probably good. Now the AI is probably going to need some more eyes than this. So we're going to go back in here. And we're going to go back into AI detection wireless snooper. Of course, we got to turn that mirror line off so we don't get a bunch of those. And we're going to need a transmitter. Put that dude right there. And I'm sure at this point we probably are going to need some general purpose processing cards. I'll just put one there for good measure. All right, we're going to need a target prioritization card. I'll slap that dude in right there. Now we're going to go for like a fighter type setup with this. So we're going to start off by setting all of these to zero. Now if you want something that's going to intercept aircraft, you want to go, now you always want to set this, the value per range, you want to set that at the lowest, just with about everything you make. Now if you want it to attack aircraft, you set this and this at the highest. If you want to have this attack surface craft, you do more like this. Okay? But we're, for our purposes right now, we're just kind of making a fighter, so we're going to go ahead and set that. We're going to go ahead and max those values out. 
And also with aircraft in front of the depths, they tend to be a little on the small side, so we're just going to take this and bring it down just a notch. And this should be a good setup to uh, have the aircraft prioritize other aircraft. Okay, I think we're good there. Now we're going to need a pre-configured card. We're going to go with the bombing run AI. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Now then, I'm going to let go of caps lock and we're going to see how this thing flies. Uh, not too bad. It seems like it's having just a little bit of trouble gaining altitude. So first thing I want to do is we're going to go to maneuver. I want to max out the idle thrust and I want to give it just a little bit of pitch control. So let's see what happens with it now. Oh yeah, much better. Now it's going to try to gain altitude. But it's, yeah, it's not gaining altitude just yet. I think we have one more thing we got to go and adjust. Now you see this right here? We want to bring this up. Uh, let's go 200 for now. On those. And with aircraft, you want this maxed out. Because we want it to always be looking ahead where it says the terrain prediction time. We want that maxed out all the time. So then that way you could avoid hitting, uh, well, hitting mountains and things like that. Um, I think an altitude of 200 meters probably be fine for what we're trying to do here. So we're going to go ahead and leave that alone. And we got a pretty fast moving plane already. Um, 114, 113 meters a second is not bad at all. So we're going to go ahead and check out its drag here. I was kind of expecting it to be a little higher over here that this is completely fine. Well, I'm wondering how it would look if I redid this to where it looked more like this. There we go. Actually, I think that's a better nose for the aircraft now. Yeah, it looks better. But we, we're seeing lots of green. That's a good sign. That means we've reduced a hell of a lot of drag. And let's do a quick auto adjust on these. Uh, oh no, we didn't want the AI to adjust it. We want the auto adjust over here. Oh, well, it, it's just the um, the default setup tends to be a bit better for attacking aircraft. Whereas if you auto adjust this. It, it's better for uh, larger targets like ships. I hate these sliders. Anyway, we'll set it up to be a bit more like that. There we go. Kind of strange that this one's green and this one's red. I don't know what's going on with that, but. Yeah, we got a fairly fast aircraft right now, so let's see about arming it. Uh, okay. So, I don't know if I want to pull that off of there, not really. Because then that would probably leave our ammo a little exposed. So, let's go ahead and put down our mirror line again. And we'll go ahead and remove the block so we can kind of see where everything is. Um, I'm thinking I could probably do that and we're going to reduce the amount of ammo this thing carries. Normally I wouldn't want to do this but we don't really have much of an option because we need a little bit more room to place other things. So I'm thinking like right about in here 
is where I'd like to go ahead and set up some missiles. Like I keep saying, missiles are usually a... It, it, with aircraft, missiles are probably like the best system to be using. All right, so we'll put that there. And I'm going to take a friend or foe and I'm gonna pop that right there. And let's see, I think I'm gonna go over here to the AI tab. We're gonna go local weapon controller and we're just gonna pop that dude right there. We're not gonna worry about a fail safe because the missiles are just going to be firing directly forward so there shouldn't be anything blocking them so we're good here now then we're going to come back down here go into missiles and I think we're gonna go small missiles and we're going to go rail launcher of course we gotta make sure that crap's turned around the correct way Okay, and oops, I selected the wrong thing. We want gantry. There we go. So we got some pretty meaty looking missiles there. We're going to go back up here and we're going to grab some obliques. And we're just going to kind of cover things up like that. We lost just a little bit of speed doing that, but nothing too crazy, I think. Alright, so with these missiles, um, I want to put, like, a turning thruster. And we're going to change some of these uh, fragmentation warheads to like EMP I think EMP frag is a great combination for missiles okay and the variable thruster I'll put that up to about 200 so it'll have more speed We can take some of these fuel tanks. Actually, I'm going to put an APN guidance in here. We're going to max out the gain on it. And the lifetime of these missiles, that seems a little short, so I'm going to put some regulators on here. That's a little bit better. Uh, do we really need all those fins at the back? Hmm. Well, we. It's just we got a, still a lot of fuel for like 30 seconds, but I think it would be okay because we want to have just like a little bit of fuel left over so the turning thrusters can work. So I think that'll be fine and we're going to copy to all and I'm going to save this over tutorial from the last time we did something actually I might have just accidentally loaded it but should be fine yeah save load we'll save this over tutorial I guess it did accidentally load over it. That's fine. We'll just put some EMP warheads back in here. Yeah, this will be fine. Yeah, these look, these look good. Okay. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and save back over that and we're gonna try loading them over here and we'll copy all that alright so now we have a fairly fast moving craft we can make it go faster I think I want to try getting this up to like 130 so I'm going to put like two more fuel injectors on here that got us like another 10 meters a second there we go of course that's going to raise the rate of how well, we use fuel so always remember adding when adding injectors it will increase the amount of fuel being used and I think I want to give this just a little bit of protection up here so you know, these tailplanes don't get shot out this shouldn't affect the speed too much there we go. All right, so it looks like our center of drag is right about here ish. Okay, you kind of want to make sure that your center of drag and your center of mass kind of line up. Otherwise, you kind of get a situation where the plane wants to fly into space or into the water. But we got it fairly well lined up here, so I think we'll be fine. We have a very fast moving aircraft. We still have room to put some other things like materials. So let's put in some material storage. And I think we can do something like this. Should be fine. I'm going to take some metal, three meter metal beams. Actually, no. There's a better way to do this. We'll put three meter beams there and there. And then we'll have that going down the metal. And I think we have a fairly decent fighter now. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get Rambot on board. All right. This is so we can put some materials in it. And I think I want to make one more adjustment to the AI. I think for the most part all this stuff is okay. Um, I don't think we want pitch to target. Actually, you know what? What the hell? Let's do a little pitch to target. Let's go ahead and leave that as is. Um, Re-engage distance. I think I want to bring that up to 1500. Yeah. The pitch to target kind of determines how far out it's going to start um, diving down on your target and we want this set to altitude relative to target combat altitude that's perfectly fine maneuver we're all good in here I think we want this to be able to just roll a little bit so we're gonna set that to 45 kinda like how we did with the jet thruster fighter I think that'll be okay um, additional, let's hop in there. We want to add a water start in case this thing happens to go into the water. Actually, that is a very, very cheap fighter. That's like about 10k. 
All right, so we're going to do the obligatory Marauder test just to make sure that the weapons are working as intended. Uh, they seem to be. Very nice. Okay, so let's hop back onto the plane here. Now, usually with these, I want to... Do we have enough ammo to reload these? I don't think so. No, we do. Okay. Now, you just didn't probably notice that that thing kind of went into space. That's probably because it was trying to get some altitude before it approached the target. Nothing to really worry about. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and jump back here into the AI and I'm going to get rid of that pitch to target. Um, break off distance, probably bring that down to like 300. Yeah. Now, one issue that this aircraft could potentially have is it seems like it wants to fly up a little too high. So I think I want to give it just a little bit more ability to control that. So we're going to pop a few of these guys in here. They are correctly set for pitcher. And I'm going to disable the particle effects because they drive me crazy. I think that's good. That'll help it regulate its altitude just a little bit better. And you can always mimic over the top of these if you don't like the look. I, I'll show you guys how to do that here real quick. We'll just grab a, uh, I guess, metal mimic. We'll pop that dude in there. And we want the look of an alloy two meter beam. And then we want it to go up, like so. And we want the up and down scaling, like that. This is something existence taught me. If you just do it like by 0 0.01, you won't even notice much of a difference in anything. Uh, let's see here, left and right scaling, we want to do that 0 0.01. There we go, you won't even know that those are there now. And you really have to zoom in to be able to even see that ridge at all. Um, we kind of want this thing to fire its missiles though well, when it's approaching a target. So we're going to go into the missile controller here. And I want to set these, or set the weapon constraints on these. I'm going to go with 20 degrees on all of these. There we go. I'm going to copy to the clipboard. And we're going to paste them over to this. There we go. Now the missile should only fire when the aircraft is facing towards it. The reason why I'm doing that is so that the missiles have a little more uh, time to reload. And it just kind of looks cooler when the plane is actually facing towards the target when they fire. Uh, it seems we have ran out of fuel, which that's fine. I'll just replace uh, these um, fuel tanks.
There we go. And she's off again. Now sometimes if you get these going a little bit too fast, um, the missiles will actually <laughs> fly back and hit the plane. If you happen to get into a scenario like that, uh, the best thing you can do uh, to uh, keep that from happening is just basically turn the launcher around and shoot them out the back instead of the front. It's not going to hurt anything and the, the missiles will find their target. Most times. But there we go, we have a very, very fast aircraft. Very, very cheap. Got lots of power. Some decent air to air missiles. Yeah, I think we're doing good. Um, I just thought of something. We probably need to go into the local weapon controller here. And we want to set some limitations on this. We don't want this to be able to fire at anything probably beyond maybe about 2,000 meters. So it doesn't waste ammo by trying to shoot things that are going to cause the missiles to run out of fuel before they reach their target. That's why I'm setting this. And a minimum range, probably like, um, I think maybe about 500 meters. Because we want the missiles to have enough time to kind of gain speed and be able to turn and reach their targets. Minimum altitude, we want to put that maybe like minus 10 meters. And maximum altitude, we'll leave that alone. So we'll go ahead and copy these settings and we'll put them on this other one here. Paste. Alright, awesome. Now, the reason why I would want to use small missiles instead of medium or large is uh, this thing is designed to be a fighter. Small missiles work a lot better for fighters. Now, medium and large missiles, they're probably better for circuit, for, I'm sorry, surface targets. Um, it's just the, I find the smaller missiles to be a hell of a lot more agile, which is a great reason to be using them in a fighter role. Uh, I think I want to armor up this AI just a little bit more. Oops, there we go. And I think it needs just a little bit more ammo production capacity, so we're going to put in some more of these ammo processors. It looks like I finally killed that Marauder out there. Okay, let's spawn in something a little more interesting here. We're going to go into white flares, and we want planes. And I think we want to spawn in a Stinger Mark III, see how it does against that. Um, yeah. It, it took that out in one volley. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's see that again. Now there is a saying in From the Depths that is very, very true in a lot of scenarios. Uh, it goes, uh, speed is armor. And with custom jet aircraft, that is most definitely the case. But yeah, we had this very nimble, very fast jet aircraft now. Um, something I should probably mention to you guys. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go with the ailerons. Um, you can also just like uh, put um, like these in its place. However, these are a little more expensive. You see the material cost there, that's 50. Um, if you want something a little bit more forceful, 
these are perfectly fine for that, but a lot of that you can actually just do with the plain old ailerons. But in case you're curious of how you would set that up, I'll, I'll go ahead and just give you a quick demonstration. Put down our mirror line. And uh, we're just going to kind of just slap these on the side like this. And we want to set these for roll. Like so, and that'll uh, you know, allow the aircraft to use the uh, roller preset for those. Again, I wouldn't recommend it because uh, these things generally they need power and they're more expensive. Whereas you put the regular ailerons uh, like this, they don't need any power. They they might need a little more protection. They tend to be a little vulnerable, which is why we got the applique over the top of them. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should probably be sharing with you guys, but unfortunately nothing really seems to come to mind at the moment. Uh, also, uh, something of note I should say is um, in the current version, you have access to... Um, one meter custom jet engines um, from the way I understood it um, when the next current version is going to be available the uh, larger custom jet engines are supposed to be more efficient versus the smaller ones so that's something to be aware of of course in 2.4.9 the only thing that I really have access to is these larger custom jet engines so that's why we're messing with them right now I think I want to try testing this against another aircraft. Let's try something a little bit more advanced. Still striders tend to have some very... fast aircraft. So let's try this against one of theirs. Uh, the Hake is notoriously tough to hit. And it has some fairly decent missiles. Yep, I was kind of expecting that to happen. Honestly, I don't know if this thing will be able to take on the Hake or not. But that thing is just a spin block nightmare. <laughs> But if you want to try to test to see if your missiles are going to be adequate for hitting about anything in the game, these hakes are like the best possible um, testing vehicle for that. Because if you look back here, these uh, engines are controlled by spin blocks and it, it uses thrust vectoring, which makes this thing very beastly. But as you can see, there's like almost nothing to it. Um, the fuel is exposed. A lot of these important blocks are exposed, like the PID and uh, some of the detection equipment here. How the nose is made up of glass. So uh, this uh, 360 camera can see out in the front of it. Um, I, I normally wouldn't build anything like this because it just seems incredibly flimsy, but... Again, speed is armor, so I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Anyway, I'll pause it. There is one thing I did forget to add, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, just like a few repair bots, that would probably be a good option. Let's see here. Misc. Let's go ahead and grab repair bots. Slap those dudes in there. Uh, 
You know, even the Hakes missile is having a hard time trying to catch up to this because it's moving so damn fast. Which is something we want. Uh, let's see here. How fast is this? Yeah, our fighter is actually faster than this thing. But like, about 25%. But it's probably got some very, very good decoys. I imagine it's probably using a mix of a radar and, and um, IR decoys. So that's going to be kind of hard to hit. So let's go ahead and destroy the enemy vehicle. Now there's something else that we could do to this plane to make it a lot more better in combat. And that's to add decoys. So let's caps lock it. And I'm going to turn off the AI so we don't like burn through all the fuel. Now, to do decoys, we need to find a place where would we think would be a good spot to uh, be popping them out of the aircraft, basically. Um, we also need to put uh, some detection for the, uh, the decoy deployers. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of these, put them in here like that. I don't know why it just decided to fire the engine back up like that. It's kind of annoying. All right, we're going to put some munition detectors like that. And they're going to need to be able to see what the hell they're doing. There we go. And we want to make sure that we can reduce the drag on this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that trick again that I was showing you guys earlier. The El Heidsmeister trick. I think I'm going to put th three meter wedges in front of these instead. Because usually the, the more shallow the angle, the uh, better it will be at reducing drag and in here we're going to just fill that back in with light alloy and I think I want to remove that block okay so now I'm gonna try putting in a essentially a decoy deployer and we will need a missile uh, controller. We're going to put that there. And then we're going to need one of these. And we're going to need, actually these aerodynamic hatches work very, very well. So I'm kind of painting myself into a corner here. Because we need to have some ejectors to be able to get these out. I think I'm going to have to pull all this out. And that. And that. Okay. So... I'm going to go back into fuel engines. We're going to just grab some injectors. We'll slap that dude in there. That way we can keep relatively the same amount of power. No, it won't be near as efficient, but that's fine. This is just kind of for demonstration purposes. All right, now we got that ejector in there. 
and we're going to grab so you're going here into control we're going to grab an ACB I'm going to stick that there and we're going to fill in that and that and I find with setting these up uh, well we go in here into missiles we go to over here we're gonna set that to just missiles only and we want this value to be I find 400 meters is usually pretty good and we don't want like any real delay on this go to target and action and go to weapon systems and we want the effect range to be like two meters and hit fire and what's going to happen here is when a missile is detected from these uh, munition warners um, the ACB is going to tell this missile controller to fire uh, these uh, decoys out of here now in here we're going to I want to have one of these to be a radar target simulator and the other one to be a sticky flare so in that way we can counteract the, the most two common types of missiles that this thing is probably going to be going up against and I'm thinking you have just a little bit of room back here I want to put some more of these and I will stick a wireless receiver down here there we go and over here we want to do the same thing on the other side we're going to switch this over to a radar target simulator actually I'm thinking now that we got this in here on the back and the front we could probably just pull that all out of there I don't need it as uh, much now. Um, I think I want to move these ACBs over here and I'm just gonna copy and paste the settings on using control C and control V and I want to take that out because really a lot of this is just kind of going back and forth and optimizing things as best you can and we can pull all that crap out of there and just replace it with a one meter beam that'll reduce our drag just a little bit more there we go and we still got the local weapon controllers there to control I mean, not the local weapon controller, but not the um, ACB is the control. The launching of the flares and the radar decoys. I kind of want to stick this over here instead. Reason being is if this thing takes a missile like right here, it, it's just going to come in here and it's going to take out our engine and it's going to probably take out our custom jet engine as well. So that's kind of why I'm doing this this way. So in here, I'm going to put in one of these, just so we could give it a little more protection. And I think just to give this a bit more of a decorative look, I want to come in here and put these wedges like this. And it looks like we kind of ran out of fuel again, but that's fine. I can just replace the beams. Alright, let's let her go again, see how she does. 
Still doing about 130 meters a second. Excellent. Um, we can get rid of these glass pieces down here. And I think these glass pieces, I want to change them to a something with a bit better angle. Grabbing three meter. Bam. A lot of times when you're doing these, um, the more and more uh, that you tinker with things, try to reduce drag and things like that, the more speed you're going to get overall. So don't be afraid to kind of experiment uh, with things. You know, just keep kind of going back and forth, seeing how you can improve things. I think we have a bit better of a fighter now, and it's got these munition systems here on the back. Yeah, okay. So let's bring in another Hake. There we go. Decoys have been deployed. Now that's going to, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's going to increase the cost a little bit, but sometimes just adding that little bit extra is going to save you in the long run. So it's perfectly uh, fine to kind of blow some materials on trying to protect your aircraft a little bit better. It's not something to necessarily dwell on. Now, you're probably noticing that it's trying to get up real high. That's because it's trying to keep its altitude relative to the target. The Hake is flying fairly high, so that's why this is flying high as well. Oh, we almost had a collision there. I think we got ourselves a pretty competent little aircraft going on here. All right. Let's see if it could take down that hake, though. To be honest, this might be just kind of a stalemate. <laughs> Because this Hake has such a low radar signature because it's so freaking tiny. Now we can go ahead and just take that out and we'll, we'll test it this some, again something that's a bit more in tune with uh, how it's built. Um, Spun in like a couple of Stinger Mark twos. Must have spun them way the hell out there. Oh yeah, that was gorgeous. Essentially took that thing down in one pass. And it's about roughly the same cost as a stinger. Yep, took that dude out. So yeah guys, that is a custom jet engine fighter. I hope you guys have found this useful. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else I should probably mention here, but uh, yeah, just um, pretty much basically 
try to keep your thrusters in line with your center of mass and usually in most cases you're going to be just fine. Um, also don't be afraid to go into uh, the um, the settings here and kind of tinker with it a bit. Um, the like the biggest things that you're probably going to be messing with is over here in maneuver. This match pitch you know, for control that's great for making sure that your plane does nose dive into the water. Um, it, if you want to uh, be able to like roll left and right, you mess with this guy here. Um, and uh, also, if you want to make sure that your jet can actually climb, crank this idle thrust up. And you don't necessarily have to have it 100% all the time, but um, if you don't have it cranked up all the way, you're not necessarily going to have a full idea how it's going to fly in combat. Alright, so if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll answer them as best I can when I can. Uh, this has been Damodoc82 with part 5 of my uh, From the Depths aircraft tutorial. Again, I hope you guys got something useful out of it. Um, I will be putting this jet on the workshop, so if you uh, guys want to look at it for reference, you can. Uh, you all have yourselves a hell of a day, and keep your hammer high. Later.